One of the ways of creating greater accuracy when cutting and marking your patterns is using a fine piece of chalk to mark out the outline. And I always admired the way tailors had sometimes specialist, sometimes homemade chalk sharpening boxes. And so this is, well, the very kind example that my partner made for me when I explained what I wanted. And it consists of razor blades put stuck into wood inside a fastening tin that can be used to sharpen your chalk to a really fine angle. And here's how we made one. So how did you get to your little wedge shapes in the first place? What did you do? Um, well, this is approximately the width of a tobacco tin. Mm -hmm. And I worked out the angle that I needed. So I'm going to mark this off in, in, in widths of tobacco tin, mm -hmm. like this something like it's not very precise but it's close enough for jazz as they say um, and I worked out what I thought would be a, a reasonable angle to have the blades at in order to rub the chalk across the blades and sharpen the chalk And that means that I can cut all of these more or less the same. And I am I am doing this by eye. Mm. But that's approximately a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not a how-to, it's how I'm doing yeah. it. That's what I say with lots of um, my, my videos. It's this is this how is I, definitely I choose not to do this, yeah. How I recommend somebody does it. It just is what I'm doing with the tools that I've got. There are other ways of doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are plenty of wood machinists and cabinet makers who would tell me I'm they doing it wrong. They would sing now, yeah. Yeah, but it'll work and it'll do a thing. And in the end, that's what we want. We want a thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut along these lines um, so we get another little batch of these fellows mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to cut some razor blades in half mm, and make a wood and razor blade sandwich um, now I find it easiest, and don't ask me why, to cut along the side of a line that I've marked rather than cutting along the line itself. Mm -hmm. Don't know That's why. The same with, sometimes with scissors it depends what's easier, is cutting um, on the left of your line or the right of your line. off these a bit just to make it nice like they say around here um, oh, 
one's got a bit of a shiver in it, but never mind. A bit of a shiver? A bit of a shiver, yeah, it's a little split. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter because I'll be gluing them all together and once they're stuck together with sticky flex, they won't go anywhere. Um, for those who don't know what sticker flex is, it's a sort of rubber mastic, which is a brilliant bonding. Other makes are available, etc. But you know, the Navy use it for gluing battleships bottoms back together and things, it's pretty strong. And I just find it a really handy way to stick things together like this that are diff made of different right. materials. Okay, so you know, it sort of stops you from using wood glue. The fact that well, it's going into I'm going to be sticking razor blades to it, you know, yeah. so um, it's no, got to stick to the tin yeah. and it's got to stick to the razor blades and it's got to stick to the wood. And so, what it effectively becomes is a um, sort of a bunch of different substances, components, if, um, stuck together in a solid rubber block. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I'll go and find some scissors. We've got a bumper party assortment of razor blades and a dog that's scratching himself too much. Bugs, stop it boy. Good lad. And uh, I'll see which one out of any of these scissors actually does what I want it to do. There we go. You can cut these in half. Thus, and then the idea is that we'll just stick those on there, mm -hmm. somewhat like that, with a little dab of sticky, mm -hmm. and then stick another one on, and we'll end up with a pile of them, mm -hmm. or possibly two piles of them, because I may not go mm -hmm. really high. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll leave them to dry. Okay. So this is about the stickiest stuff on the planet. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not playing. It will. It's going to. Um, there we go. It's, it is sort of liquid. But, um, but the, the, about the only thing that will shift it once you've got it all over you is, is petrol. Um, Not even thinners? Um, well, thinners will, but petrol's really the stuff. But here's what we're doing, is we're sticking that on there, and I'm using Using the razor shape as a guide? That little divot. Mm. there as a guide so the the hope is that we get them all approximately in the same position and yeah. something like matching each other because it makes a better job if if they are um, and I'm trying not to use too much of this stuff because, because it will get absolutely everywhere Oh, no, we're there, we're good. Um, and this is just an almighty fiddly, hmm. fiddly fiddle faddle, really. But, um, but this is how it goes. And I will wind up wearing it because I always do, you know, it's just one of those, one of those comedy turns that you end up with with it in your beard and up your nose and in your eyebrows and on the dog on the dog 
yes, all of those things, all of the above. Um, and you have to just accept that that is pretty much inevitable and part of the game and, you know. Yeah. Right. And now we chop another one of these up. Don't use Constance's best pattern cutting scissors or she'll, you know. That's a good to be growing a beard at the moment, actually, if we're cutting up all your razor braids. <laughs> yeah. This process will, of course, get extremely tedious. Oh, I think we could, we could, we could, we could have a different angle, and I can speed up the film, and then you haven't got to keep talking over it if you don't want to either. I think the trick to this actually is do it in sections. I'll put this to one yeah, side and, do the and then again. do another one mm. and another one and then stick stick them all together. Mm. Um, when they've dried, because if I get 20 of these high, mm. it's going to go wibbly and yeah. slide around the place. So I'm at, I am actually, I think... At the optimum. Yeah, I'm probably going to just put that to one side now and say great smashing super or whatever um, and start again the only problem with that as a course of action you need to know where they are so they line up yeah so I do need to match that one up with yeah. the one below it because it will work better the, the more aligned they are that's what I've learned yeah. But I can do that, you know, it's yeah. not like I can't, it's just going to require a little bit of, a little bit of thought. Where's that pencil? Behind my you, ear. Yeah. I do that. And that. <laughs> That's largely filming your ear then, which is not helping anyone. Well, I'll do that. Oh, you're fine. I'm the one that's Make a mark on there. in control of the camera and not doing a very good job. And then put that up to that there. And if that's about the same, which it is, mm -hmm. we're in business, you see. I think I'll come back around the other side. Yeah, all right. And I am, of course, predictably... Covered in sticker flex. Covered in sticker flex, yeah. But there it is. It's, um, it is, as they say, what it is. Bubs is all right if little ball. Oh, have we used that one box of razor blades? We have. Yes, we're ready for another bit of wanton extravagance. We'll use another one. Right, I'm going to put that to one side because if I don't. It'll start wobbling about mm -hmm. and it won't work nearly as well. You have two little sharp wedges now. Hmm. Yeah, don't put your tongue near them. Um, so, we'll do this again and I'll just mark that off with my pencil. And it is your pencil, isn't it? It is. It is indeed. It's got my name on and everything. Must be mine. Um. But these are nice little presents if you've got somebody who sews. Because hmm. a backy tin will fit in your back the back pocket of your jeans or... I was going to say you have revealed here a very big difference 
I remember thinking this when you gave it to me, between men's and women's clothing. <laughs> You'd be very hard pressed to get that in any pocket in women's clothing unless they've made the clothes themselves. Right, okay. No, it'll fit. Backy tin fits in my back pocket. No, you don't wear jeans anymore. It fits in your knee pocket. Your, is that your map pocket or your dressing pocket? Yeah, it fits pocket? in the map pocket on, on, a, on a pair of denims. Army denims. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've never thought thing. about. I've never thought about actually carrying this around. Whether if you went in somewhere where they check your. Don't know. I can imagine it might raise, raise eyebrows. You know, yes. but then the contents of your handbag would, wouldn't it? Mm. Generally speaking, you carry well, if I've got my metal of... all in my handbag. Then yeah. that, that is a stabby, bit spiky yeah. things. You know, <laughs> I try not to carry that around actually because because of how sharp it is and how yeah, the size of it. But yeah, a tobacco tin is a useful a useful container for many things. Well, hence why you have so many of them. Indeed. Whose tobacco tin is this one? Do you know? Uh, I have no idea where the who who smoked who that smoked tobacco. Boar's head. But, you know, two ounces of boar's head originally. Um, I bought a job lot of tobacco tins at an auto jumble. With contents? Um, no, no. They you just were, bought the I tins. I just bought the tins, all taped together in in lots of five, and I think they were a pound, one pound fifty for five of them, or something. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought they'll be, they'll be useful, and they've been useful in many, many ways over the years. Razor blade in between them all as well, won't you? In between uh, yeah. there. Yeah. I'm just going to stick him on there. There. Lovely. So we'll leave those to dry. and come back and have another go later. As they say. And I am going to point out for the, <laughs> for the tape, for the purposes of the tape, this is the next day, but Alex is dressed in exactly the same clothes. I'm not. <laughs> you are. Am I wearing an equally scruffy shirt yesterday? No, you had that. Oh no, you're right. You had your shirt on yesterday. I am wrong. Well, I didn't have this revolting You didn't on. have the revolting fleece on. No. Thank you. So very much. <laughs> Ooh. Right. So what we've got is three rather random sections of this. Mm. And what I'm going to have to do, what I'm going to have to do, is draw on here. Bugs! A bit of a curve. Mm. Thus. And then cut it out, and we'll just see how it sits in there because I need to cut two pieces of wood, mm. one for either end, to sort of yeah. wedge that.
There will probably be about a million people telling me. Should you have a guard on that? I should have guards on this, and I should have goggles, and I should have. You've got glasses on. Um, you have got glasses on. I should have all sorts of safety equipment. And I, I was going to say, we're looking right at the scar on the back of your hand. I mean, you know, you know all of this. Um, <laughs> I do, indeed, know all of this only too well. I have been operating these machines since I was about eight. So, I shall take precisely no notice. Yep. <laughs> I like that smell. It's like when you do wood turning, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's, it's actually burning wood really because I because I was cutting around a corner and yeah well that's well that's what wood turning is in a way as well isn't it yeah. yeah yeah right so these chaps go in here like this and then I'm rather hoping there might be enough room for me to wedge it probably isn't actually quite I can just wedge one more in there and that will probably do. What's that dog doing? He's chasing whatever he thinks lives in that corner again. Bugs, you're a muppet. I don't think anything lives in there. Or if it's just a very big spider. No, uh, it's probably living in the thickness of the wall. It's being a wooden wall. Uh, right, I need to cut another another one of these in half and I haven't got my scissors here. So, this is the bit where we really get covered in. Sticker flex. Covered sticker in. flex or sticker flex? Um, it's sticker flex. Sticker flex. too worried about getting sick effects on top of the wood or anything like that because it's going to be full of chalk mm -hmm. so I don't think it matters overly if we get this stuff it does not like it all over you <laughs> well I prefer not to get it in my beard that's a fact um, because that's deeply tedious, but, um, but other than that, I'm not too more fussed. It's more about making absolutely sure that we're not going to get razor blades coming loose mm. and things. Mm -hmm. Very good. So we do that. have got to be really careful of this, you don't decide to press it down on a razor blade. On top of the razor <laughs> no, blades, don't do that. Which um, would be a slightly messy process. Um, like that? Yeah, I just cut myself. I knew it would, you know, it's inevitable, but... Um, Put a jollop in there, and that will sting like hell when I um, clean Put my hands petrol. off with petrol. <laughs> yep. Um, That's right. Everyone's just getting a glimpse into a day in your life, really, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just my little world, isn't it? You know, if it wasn't this, it'd be some antique lorry or a lump of steam engine or something. 
some piece of a Victorian field gun or something, you know, it's, it's all the same, it's, um, my world is fixing stuff. Um, so, that's kind of it, mm -hmm. really. Can, um, I, can I get close to it? Yeah. Very nice indeed. So do you need to leave that to dry uh, now? Yeah, just leave that to dry. I'll go and wipe the uh, Sikaflex and the blood off my fingers. And, <laughs> Splendid. Um, and we'll come back and look at it we'll tomorrow. we'll come back to look at that tomorrow. Excellent, thank you. Okay. And here we have, 24 hours later, the finished chalk sharpening box with everything dry inside and us ready to test it out and make sure that it it works beautifully which I hope it does and I'm sure it will so I'm starting with a fairly fresh bit of chalk that hasn't got a sharp edge on it already it's got quite a blunt edge and running it across the blades of the razors trying to keep it as a smooth and straight across action as possible which it's working very nicely um, I don't know how much the noise is going to irritate people, so I will take some of that out. Um, yeah, but it, it works nicely. It works even better than the Mark 1, so the, the Mark 2 is definitely an improved version. And now you can see the results of the sharpened chalk in this straight line. And then if I turn the chalk over, and you can see what a line looks like when drawn with the blunt edge, and you can see when I move the ruler away, it's a much blurrier, less sharp line. And then here we have the sharpened straight edge again. And demonstrating the same here with the white chalk, so that first line was with the blunt edge. And here is the sharpened edge, and you get a much finer, crisper line. And again, and again. So I hope you enjoyed this little project, and um, yeah, maybe you'll have a go at buying your own chalk sharpener, or maybe you'll even have a go at making your own. Who knows? Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>